If you've been watching or playing Splatoon 3 for the last few weeks now, you'll have run into countless S-Blast players. It's no secret that people are in love with this weapon. Teams like Last Resort and Arctic Blitz have been working it into their competitive matches ever since its debut in Sizzle Season. Even a month after its release, the weapon is still super popular in solo queue. But at the end of the day, surely it's just another blaster, right? The weapon class known for having polarizing weaknesses and being outclassed by things like sloshes. What makes S-Blast any different? Well, that's the question we're going to answer today. Why does everyone play the S Blast 92? Without any further ado, let's get into it. Ironically, in order to understand why everybody plays the S Blast, we'll first need to understand what makes Blasters so annoying to play in this game. There are a few main problems I see with this weapon class as a whole, but we're going to cover just one weakness of the class, and in my opinion, the biggest one, reliability. With how big of a blast radius Blasters have, this may be a shock to some of you, but in reality, it can be really hard to consistently threaten people with this weapon class. Take the Range Blaster for example. This weapon is insanely threatening at its maximum range, boasting insane pressure and threatening a one-shot from a distance. However, if you're able to close the gap on the weapon, it's almost helpless. You have tons of end lag to deal with, poor mobility, lack of paints, horrible ink consumption, and a sub and special that don't get people off of you. Okay then, what about the Lunar Blaster? That weapon can fight up close easily. This time, the problem is in reverse. Most weapons can just kind of outrange it and outpaint it to prevent it from taking space. Not to mention weapons like tri and Machine do the blaster's job, but just better 90% of the time. So what's even the point in picking them? Compare this to S-Blast, which can not only change its range and blast radius to suit the situation, and not only does it have a special design to form force it into areas, and a sprinkler to paint its feet or provide short bursts of mobility, but it also has better ink management and is a mid-weight weapon. S-Blast is able to play both up close and far away, which allows it to be way more consistently threatening than other blasters, at a range or not. This is the first blaster in the game that is able to comfortably play at both ranges, which gives it a massive boost in the area that blasters were lacking in, reliability. As I said earlier, another massive weakness of the blaster class is mobility, due to the lack of paint and heaps of end lag that the class has. However, there's one other reason and why their mobility is so bad. Blasters have to stay grounded. With no intensify action, most blasters have horrific jump RNG, to the point where you can be up close to someone and still miss. Staying grounded makes you way easier to shoot, however, and makes it way harder for your high end lag weapon to move around. You need to invest in a lot of intensify action to negate this coin flip, which most players simply just don't want to do. Some people feel gatekept by this lack of consistency and lack of mobility. But, once again, the S Blast 92 changes the game. If you shoot and then hit jump, you can do the long range fire mode of the S Blast with zero jump RNG. This means that you are dealing with a one shot with similar range to the range blaster that has no RNG and doesn't require any gear. That is insane. And if you add on all the other quirks like it's short range mode and it's 70 indirect damage, there's no secret that this weapon is what every blaster player needs. The thing that drove people away from the class was its insane drawbacks being mobility, consistency and paint output. Having all three of those things in one with the only solution being running a specific gear build is not a good combo. But since the S Blast doesn't have to worry about these, it sees so much more use competitively and casually. Its grounded and jumping firing modes can take a bit to get used to, but after at worst an hour of playing, it'll become very natural. I think the reliability helps the weapon in more ways than just being better. The consistency of S Blast makes it a lot less infuriating to play. You're no longer flipping a coin to land a shot. Either you hit it or you don't. Every direct is deserved on the S Blast send, and even if you don't get it perfect, you have another high damage shot to make up for that. Blasters are usually tricky to pick up and play without good gear, with their unreliable nature. But here, the weapon is way easier to rely on, and therefore you can comfortably start out and improve with it. The amount of fun everyone's been having with no RNG is incredible, and really cool to see. On the flip side, it's not that the weapon is super easy either. The S Blast still has a lot of potential and a high skill ceiling, meaning that you can play this weapon for months, and probably still find ways to improve. From just pressing the buttons correctly, to changing between modes, to comboing with your reef slider, to landing consistent precise shots, this weapon has so much to master and I'm really here for it. Having a weapon that has a lot of potential with a low skill floor is a recipe for replayability and strength. However, there's still one aspect of this weapon that pushes people away from it. As I'm sure you can probably guess, it's the horrible kit that it's got. So let's discuss that and uncover the secret genius behind its design. There's no denying that the kit s -Blast got is far from perfect. Sprinkler and Reef Slider are similar in the sense that they are viewed as some of the worst subs and specials in the entire game, either being kind of pointless or just leading to you dying. 
However, from my experience with the S-Blast, I think this is actually not the end of the world like people are making it out to be. The main job of a weapon kit is to either enhance a weapon's strengths, for example Splatana, Stamper, and Carbon Roller Deco's access to damage combos with burst bombs, or the kit can cover the weaknesses of the main weapon. Think about the 96's Kraken to cover the weapon's inabilities to fight at this distance. And with the S-Blast, the weapon kit can do a little bit of both. The Blaster class are not typically seen too much in Splat Zones, due to their inability to paint and help their team. However, not only is a Sprinkler a great sub for painting and controlling an area like a zone, but Reef Slider excels at painting or even completely overtaking zones for free. This helps to combat s Blast's otherwise lack of paint in this mode, allowing for more versatility and reliability than it already has. And the synergy doesn't even stop there. Blasters have a modest damage per second and object damage at best, so popping the Rainmaker is usually a massive task for this class. However, once again, the kit comes to the rescue. Reef Slider can completely cheese the Rainmaker, and even the Sprinkler can provide some much needed Rainmaker shield damage if you set it up right. Reef Slider has a massive indirect damage radius, and so does S Blast, allowing it to combo off of the special for a quick kill. If the S Blast player wants a mini meat shield or a movement option, placing a Sprinkler at its feet is a great way to have that. It's no burst bomb or splash wall, but it definitely gets the job done. Don't get me wrong, quite a lot of kits would work way better for this weapon, but I think even the mediocre weapon kit ties into the main design philosophy behind and the S-Blast, and why it's so popular. Everything, from the lack of gear dependency to the firing modes to the kit, it all comes together to create the blaster that everyone has needed. A jack of all trades, reliable weapon that you can send the enemy team packing with. With great synergy, reliability, consistency, and power, people are having tons of fun with the S-Blast 92. Not just competitively, but casually too. I hope you enjoyed the video, it was really fun to write and put together. I hope that I could shine some light on this wonderful weapon. But aside from that, make sure to take care and have a good day.